friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. In today's video, I am going to go through all of the hands-on learning activities that I have set up for my pre-K and kindergarten students for the first week of this new school year. You will see activities for math and literacy skills and even some science that we're going to be doing this week. Um, we have started our first week, so if there are any activities that I show you that we have already done and I have a little bit of video from those activities, I'll insert those clips. Um, but if not, then you're just gonna hear me talk about the different activities. So if you have a pre-K or kindergarten student or you're a teacher of a pre-K or kindergarten class, then stay tuned. You might enjoy seeing the activities that we're gonna be doing so that you can do them with your students as well. And of course, links will always be in the description box because I know sometimes you guys want to be able to grab these activities for yourself. All right, so if you are excited to join me, then let's go and let's take a look at the fun hands-on learning activities that we have for the first week of school. Okay, friends, we are going to start with a new activity that I created for my kiddos. And I am creating a handful of literacy and math activities on the pre-K and kindergarten level and I'm putting them all in a big bundle called Back to School uh, Fun for Young Ones. And so if you want to get all these activities, they're super cheap right now because I'm still working on many of them. So I think there's only four in the bundle right now. Um, and then you'll get the rest for free. So I'll leave a link to these. But the first one I'm going to show you here is called Count and Add. So what it is, is it gives the children different mats. So here you're looking at mat number two. Here's mat number one. I, I believe there's three different mats, four different mats. I can't remember because I made this a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but anyways, what you do is you choose a county mat. It's all kind of back to school related um, pictures on it. And then there are cards. So they will take a card and it says how many. So how many apples are on our mat? So they will have to count one, two. There are two apples on our mat. And then they can go ahead and use these cards that I have um, that come with the download. Now, I laminated everything because my kids, you know, um, are rough with things. So I like to keep things laminated. But what they would do is they would find the number two and they'll place it on the card there, as you can see. Now, then you can have them do another one. So, okay, um, they'll take another card. How many pencils? So they're going to find their number three because there's three pencils after they count it. And they will put a three, where are we at? On that card. Now you can extend the activity and do addition. So for your kindergarten kids who are ready to do addition, you can then take the cards. So on our mat, we had two apples and we had three pencils. How many is that all together? So then I have cards here where you can have them actually make a number sentence. So you can have them put the, the plus sign in there and then you can have them put the equal sign and then they have to count how many that makes all together. So then they have their number sentence. Two apples plus three pencils makes one, two, three, four, five. You can have them count on their mat if they need to. Then they're gonna find their answer card and they're gonna place it, you know, at the end for their answer. Let me move these so you can see that. Okay, so you can extend the activity into addition if you want, and then uh, you can go on, you can have them count all the different objects that are on the mat. You can have them do other addition sentences. You can have them do a new mat. So for this mat, they could grab, you know, this card and count how many um, scissors and, and so on. alphabet book that I showed you in a recent video so I'm not going to go through it um, too much in detail because you saw it they just 
match up the picture to the letter. But I'm going to pair it with this. This is a an alphabet block set that I got at a garage sale for like 25 cents last summer. And it was a major steal. And I love it. And so I'm just going to have them match up. So let's say they were going to do the letter C page and they, sorry, it's loud. I have Velcro on it. Um, so let's say they matched up cat to the letter C, right? For k -k cat. Then I'm going to have them find the letter C in their alphabet set and match it up. Look, cat starts with C and cow, k -k cow starts with C. They both start with the letter C. C for cow, C for cat. Okay, so I'll have them match them up. Some of them might match. Um, this is D for dog and D for dinosaur. So I'm kind of glad that they're different so that they can see another um, picture that starts with that letter. However, like ele elephant's gonna match. So we can just say, you know, E for elephant. And here's an elephant, E for elephant, okay? Uh, but some of them won't match and that's okay. So if you have a puzzle set, uh, something like this or something different that has all of the letters, you can have them match them up to their book and just to make it, you know, another step that they have to do and more practice, okay? So again, um, all of these activities will be linked below. So if you're looking to get this alphabet book, um, it will be in the description box. Okay, this next activity is a new one. This one is also part of my back to school fun activity bundle. And this one is called Missing Letter Match. So again, since it's back to school, it's going to have a little back to school theme. So this one is lunch boxes. And what the kids are going to do is they are going to fill their lunch boxes by finding the missing letter of these CVC words. Now, if you're not familiar, um, what is CVC? It is consonant, vowel, consonant words. Okay, so those of us who have taught kindergarten, first grade, um, for a long time, we're very familiar with CVC words because of the first kind of words that the young ones who are just learning to read will practice, okay? So once they've learned all their sounds, they will practice their CVC words. Now these are a lot of fun. So basically what they will do, and my kids have already done these, so that's why they're all mixed up and I'm trying to get them back a little bit in order because they already did these. But what they'll do is they will take a lunch box. Okay, so here is a lunch box. We have P, N, and then we're missing a letter in the middle. So for this, this lunch box is missing the vowel. And then I have the picture there so that they know what word we're looking for. We're looking for the word pin. Puh, in, it, it, we're missing it. So they have to look through all of their um, lunchbox items and find the letter and then they're gonna put it in their lunchbox. Okay, so here we have uh, an eye on, the, on a piece of cheese. So we're gonna put cheese in this lunchbox. So this is a pin and now we're matched up and we'll just find another one. All right, this one is bed, but as you see, um, it is missing the beginning sound for this one. So we're missing b, b. So again, they're gonna look through all of their pieces and they're gonna find the B and put that in to their lunchbox. Okay, so there are a ton of them for, to match up. Some are gonna be missing the middle sound, the vowel sound, or the ending sound. Net is missing the ending sound, as you can see there. Okay, so um, an idea for you so that your kids don't get too overwhelmed is to put all of these pieces either in a pocket chart so that they can easily choose their piece or just give them a couple of choices. And that might help a lot with your kids that this might be a, a difficult activity for. So if this is a difficult activity, especially if you're working with a preschooler, this would be a very difficult activity. Um, but you still want you still want to challenge them and you still want to do it. You can give those children like two or three choices. So here I'm going to have, I have an, an A, an I, and let's say a U. So we'll use a couple different vowels here. All right, so I would just give that child three choices. Ka-at, a-a-a, we're missing a for cat. C-at, cat, okay, C and T, we're missing the a. What letter says a? And then they can choose from the three that you have over here, okay? So they're missing the A for cat, C-A-T cat. All right, so 
just an option for those kiddos that might need a little less in the choices. You don't want to hand them this whole stack and then they're trying to look through that. That could be um, disastrous. So either put them in a pocket chart where they can easily see them or just give them a couple of choices and that is helpful as well. Okay, here I have a couple of science activities that we're going to be doing. These science activities I have um, in a bundle as well, and I will leave the link below to them. Uh, but I've shown some of them in a video before. So the animal kinds activity I showed in a video, so I'm not gonna go over that, but I am going to be doing this with my kids. Okay, then animal homes. Let's go ahead and show you this activity. So this activity, the students are matching their pic pictures to the sentence strips. So let me get those out. And by the way, I have Play-Doh over here because the Play-Doh goes with this Animal Kinds activity that I already showed you guys in another video. I've, if I remember, I will try to link that video below in case you haven't seen it. Okay, so this one is um, these little strips and we are matching where the animal lives. Okay, so this one, I would read it to them, and I would give them a couple choices. Let me move these. Okay, so I would maybe give them a couple choices here. All right, <clears throat> so let's move these ones out of the way. Okay, so this is the one we're working on, and these are our choices here. Okay, a spider lives on a den web or hive. Where does the spider live? And then they'll match it up. Lives in a web. A bee lives in a hive. Match it up. Now I have some Velcro on these. You don't have to have Velcro, but if you do, it just makes it a little bit easier for your preschoolers. A lion lives in a den and so on. Okay, so that's what this activity is like. There's a handful of different um, animals that they're gonna be matching to where they live. Okay, so that one is Animal Homes. All right, just a cute little science activity. called living and growing okay it's a life science activity and I wanted to show you guys that whenever there are mats that come with a certain activity I tend not to laminate them I don't waste a laminating sheet I have bought the reusable um, sleeves and so I just slide them into a reusable sleeve usually and we um, just use these, okay? So these are great because you can use dry erase markers on them. I'm sure you guys probably have something like this. So, because um, they're super popular. All right, so just um, I slide that in there. And then this is called, what do people, plants and animals need to live and grow, okay? So we are basically teaching the children to match up let me put this over there. By the way, I always print out the directions on a label paper and then I stick it onto the bag so I have everything all together, okay? So I keep the entire activity in this bag and then I have the directions on the front in case in years to come I forget what this is and how to use it. <laughs> it's right there on the front for me. All right, so people, plants, and animals need things to live and grow. So we'll talk about um, the things that people and plants need. And then we will match up the animal or the people or the plant to what it needs, okay? So they will place an animal, a person, or a plant on the mat. And then what is one thing that the rabbit might need? Well, the rabbit might need, looking at these three things over here, this rabbit will probably need a carrot. Rabbits eat carrots. So it's helping the children um, match up 
like the animal to what it eats or the living thing to what it needs, okay? So here's another one they could maybe match up. The baby needs its milk. Okay, so great for little preschoolers. Um, I had a lot of fun creating this activity. Okay, so here's one. The plants will probably need some water. There's also another one they can match up with that. The plant might need sun. Okay, so yeah, just we're matching up what they might need. This one is cute. The kids, what might they need? They might need food. Look at that yummy breakfast. Or a squirrel might need an acorn. He might need nuts. All right, so anyways, I won't go through all of them, but there's a lot of fun matching up pictures here that the kids can match up as they talk about animals and plants and what they might need to live and grow. Okay, moving on to some math activities. I know you guys have probably seen these next two activities already because they are from my early learners math curriculum. It is a curriculum that I wrote um, back, I wanna, wanna say 2014, 2015 ish, somewhere around there. So it's been some years. Um, but I am always pulling out the same activities over and over again because I'm a mom of eight children and so I always, almost always have somebody that can, that has grown to the age where they can get use out of it. So um, this is an activity from the very first unit of that curriculum and this activity is a lot of fun because it's matching up. We're doing numeral uh, values along with the numerals. So number values and numerals they are learning. Now, you can um, do the activity with just what it comes with or you can add on some manipulatives. So up here I have some Lego Duplo blocks that we used when we did this activity the other day. Um, and if I have a clip of my kids doing any of these activities, I will insert those clips into this video uh, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when kids are actually doing the activities. Um, so stay tuned for that because I think I have, might have a clip of them working on this. All right, so uh, if I don't, I don't, but I know I have some clips of them working on some of these activities that I'm showing you. All right, so for this activity, they are going to count the pencils in the um, cup. Then they're going to match it up with that same number of blocks that are on the cards here. So this is one-to-one -one correspondence and then they have to match it up with the numeral. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then they have to find the seven blocks and then they will place it right here. Okay, and then the last step is to find the numeral. So obviously I'm gonna find the numeral number seven. Okay, now what I had them do instead of using these, well we did use these cards, but I actually had them use the blocks and they would put their seven on there like that. And that was a lot of fun because we also practiced putting our blocks in order. I think I talked about that in another activity. So then they would just go on to the next one. They would count um, how many. So we're practicing our counting up through 10 and we found our number four. Then they can use manipulatives and count it out as well. So here I just have some um, counting bears. So then they can do this. One, two, three, four. So it's just another visual uh, to go along with it.
So there's that activity. Let me show you another one. Okay, this activity I think is also from my early learners math curriculum. And it is a crayon flipping count. So what you do is you take the cards and you mix them up and you put them upside down in this, um, put them upside down in this little square here. And then what the kids do, and you need to provide them with some real crayons. So here's a real crayon box. And then what they do is they flip it over. So this says four, and then they count out four crayons and put them on the mat. One, two, three, four, just like that, okay? So my uh, children did this activity already as well, and they loved it. They, they worked together, and so one child would hand the other child the crayons as they you know, counted out loud. It was really cute, so great for preschool. Again, you could probably make this into an addition activity if you took two cards and then had them count out both and add them up. But the original intent was just to flip and count, practicing our counting to 10. This next activity comes from my hands-on to learn preschool curriculum and this curriculum really focuses on just preschool kiddos so we're talking about two three-year-olds okay um, so it is a curriculum that's great for those young ones now this activity is another counting activity and these are our fine motor mats so they are going to practice with their little hands um, tracing these objects and then they're going to see the number and then see the numeral okay now i have um, some of these in plastic sleeves and so that way they can trace and this is a dry erase marker so they can trace with the dry erase marker so we will practice our tracing obviously um, so what they do is they trace and i love that it's dry erase because obviously we can erase it and do it over and over again now what i like to do with um Fine motor, motor activities like this is I also like to, of course, incorporate the counting. So you might want to bring in some blocks like I have here. I love, and any math teacher loves, any elementary math teacher loves these um, snap cubes, right? Okay, um, so what I would have them do is just to take, let's count, how many? One sock, one snap cube, one. Okay, put one. Now we're going to trace two. This one's already done. So they would trace it. They could color it in with you know, their um, dry erase markers if they want. And then, now we're gonna count two. One, two, two. This is one, two balloons and two blocks. Let's put them together. That's two. Okay, then, you know, if you, do, if you do three, again, you can do the same thing. Take your blocks, counting one, after they trace, obviously, two, three. This is three. One, two, three bears, three blocks. Let's put them together. This is one, two, three blocks. And, of course, they're using their fine motor skills to put these together and to do their tracing, okay? So you can do it all the way up through, let's say that they're going to do all the way up through 10. And of course, after they trace their uh, butterflies here, then they can, of course, match up one-to-one -one correspondence with the blocks. And then, of course, you can put them all together when you are done, all right? 
Okay, so then what I would have them do is just snap them all together using our fine motor skills, using our counting skills. They're gonna count as they go, every single one, until they get to eight, nine, 10 and they're going to have this big long block of 10 and they are going to just be so excited because they are a preschooler and they did they made something all by themselves. Okay, this next activity is also from my hands on to learn preschool curriculum and this activity our preschoolers are going to be builders. Okay, so that's why we have our construction crew here and they are going to be building numbers within their 10 frame. So it comes with these cards. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to flip over a card and they're going to build that number. So here we have the number two and we are going to use any, you can use any objects that will fit into the 10 frame on the mat. So um, I could just use my bears if I want and we can count one, two. Okay, so we built two inside our 10 frame or again, we could use these because since we're building, then when we get finished, we can build it into one big long stack again. Okay, so there's two. I, I would flip over another card. I could build six. Okay, so it was one of my preschoolers birthdays um, the first week of school so we did some birthday activities for the first week and we did this birthday count activity and it has two parts to it so the first part is they have a birthday cake and then they have little number guys so these are our number guys and they would take a number guy and this number guy is seven and then they would have to count out seven candles on their cake, okay? So this would be the number seven um, cake. We could even put him right on the cake, okay? And then they would count out one, you get the idea. Two, three, four. Okay, so there are seven candles on our number seven cake. They, they could do it again, you could switch the number, this time we're just going to count out two and so on. So again, counting uh, one through 10, fun practice. Another way you can use this same activity is it comes with number counting cards. So this is the first way we did it. And then we also practiced with these cards. And I will put a clip in um, the video here of my kids. I know I have a clip somewhere of my kids doing this activity because they, they really, really enjoyed it that day. But basically these are the cards and these cards actually go all the way up through 20. So they could count, um, some of these have two cakes on them so they could count all the way up through 20. So they've got the teen numbers in there. But just to give you an example, they would take a card, they would count the, the candles on the cake, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they would find the number six, and it will match up with the animal that's on the card. So um, when I find my number six, since it matches up, I just, they put their number right over the animal that's on the card. So there's different animals here. So like we've got our bear, we've got our cat and so on. So if they were going to do this act, this one, their number card will be a cat. Two, three, four. So this is the number eight. So my number card here should be, yeah, is a cat. Okay, so they would just match them up. So that's the other way we can you could do this activity.
Moving on, we're going to talk about some literacy activities. So this is another new activity in my back to school literacy um, bundle for pre-K and kindergarten. And this is alphabet letter sound match. Okay, so the children are going to be working on two different skills with this activity. They're going to be working on matching capital to lowercase as well as matching sounds. Okay, so they're going to take a card. There's a card for every letter of the alphabet and they all have the capital letters on them. All right, and of course, since it's school, back to school themed, we have some back to school pictures on there. All right, so they will take the letter A card. They will have to find the lowercase a and place it on the card. And then they will have to find the picture that begins with A. Okay, so they will match it up just like that. My kiddos already did this um, and they loved it. I think we might do it again. So here we have, and they can match it either way. You could put the picture first and then match up the lowercase letter, however you want to do it. But once they match it up, then the other thing we did is I took out our alphabet bean bags. I absolutely love these things. We use them for so many different activities. So they have a capital letter on the front and they have a lowercase letter on the back. So then they had to find the correct one, and then they had fun matching it up. Now you could play a game where you can have them um, toss, you know, the, the, the bean bag on the right one. So let's say they complete two or three of these. Let's say we've got two or three of them. They've completed them, they matched them up. Then you could give them a bean bag and they have to toss it onto the right one. Okay? Or you could just have them match it up just as an extra. Uh, to add more fun to this activity. So here we can match it up and then we talked about this is capital A, lowercase a. A says ah, 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 as an apple. A says ah, ah, ah. Of course you always want them to repeat the sounds after you. You want them to repeat what you're saying. So capital A, lowercase a. A says ah, ah, ah. All right, you get the idea. You're, you're grown adults. <laughs> I don't have to do it with you. But um, that's what I do. So I always have them repeat me as we're doing activities and practicing our phonetic sounds. Okay, here's another birthday activity that we did. They were matching the presents to the beginning sounds for this one. So this is what they had. They had a card like this. And they have a picture here. So this is a rug. Let me scoot you guys in here see a little bit better. And then they also had the birthday presents and then they had to match it up obviously. Now what I did with these presents because they are kind of tiny for their little hands and I didn't want them to have to like you know sift through all of them to find their answer is I use a pocket chart. So this is one of our tabletop pocket charts. I have two of them. I have a green one and a blue one. And then literally I just put all of the presents in here and then we sat the pocket chart up um, so that they could see it and easily reach it. And you'll see, I do have a video of them working on this activity. So I think I'll put a clip in here of them doing it. But um, you'll see that they were just delighted to match up all these letters. So they would just take another card and match up the next one. So this one, the beginning sound is ha ha hat. And again, they would match it up. I will also note that there are lots of other birthday activities. We didn't do this one because this one was too hard for them, but this might be good for a kindergartner who is telling time to the hour. Actually, it's probably not too hard for them. We just haven't really done a whole lot of it yet um, with my preschoolers. So um, I didn't do this activity the other day, but this is another fun one. And again, it has a birthday theme. So there are a handful of other skill-based activities that have birthday themes. I'll leave a link below to the uh, birthday bundle.
Okay, something else we worked on were these Constant Eval clip cards. These are from my Phonics for Reading curriculum. I believe the un the second unit on short vowels. Um, I believe. Uh, yeah, because the first unit is alphabet. So uh, these would be from the second unit. Uh, I um, still love using my Phonics for Reading curriculum. I made it a couple of years ago, and it's one of my favorite curriculums that I ever wrote. And what they do is they match the um, consonant and vowel blend to the picture, okay? So there are two ways that we do clip cards. I know you guys have seen clip cards before a million times. Um, you can obviously use them with clips like I have here and they clip on their answer. So this one would be SA for sock, right? S-O. Um, that's the blend for sock and uh, they can clip them on. Now, I have noticed that when you are working with very young children, maybe not for this activity, you wouldn't be working with a two-year-old, but if you're working with a two-year-old or a three-year-old and you have clip cards and they have to clip like, say, the alphabet letter or something like that, they will get so frustrated with these clips and trying to figure out how to clip them on. Um, maybe not your kids, maybe your kids are, <laughs> are never frustrated, but my little ones just have the hardest time clipping them on. Now it is a good fine motor skill. So if that's what you're going for, then yes, use the clips. If you're going for, for fine motor skills, use the clips. But if you are rather going for them to actually work on the phonics skill and not have to worry about the fine motor and not get so frustrated, um, then what I do is I just pull out like manipulatives like these little pom-poms that I have here and then they just place it on the answer. So this one is fit for fish and so you would just, they would just place it on the answer and they could go on to the next card and they're not fiddling with the clips and um, it's just something that I have found really works for those kids that get super frustrated um, with the fine motor and then you're not spending 20 minutes trying to teach them how to do the clips. I mean, you could do that another time when you're really working on fine motor skills, but if you're working on the phonics skill, um, then I just use the um, manipulatives until the kids get good at using the clips. And then once they're good at using the clips, we'll use the clips. So, all right, so anyways, this one is a lot of fun. We practice those beginning sounds. Okay, moving on. Now this activity does work on colors, but it's mostly working on color words. So it's actually considered a literacy activity, not just working on colors for preschoolers. It's working on our color words. So they are getting practice. Color words are actually sight words, okay? So they are getting practice with some sight words that they need to be able to look at and memorize. Now a sight word is a word that they should be able to see and automatically know what the word is. They shouldn't have to sound it out because oftentimes they can't be sounded out. Now, um, some of them, obviously, of our color words can be. You can sound out the color red, okay? But for these young kids, they're not gonna be sounding out a lot of these. They're going to be memorizing what the word looks like. Oh, when I see B-L-U-E, that means blue, okay? So we're practicing those literacy skills and we're practicing memorizing those color words, okay? So what this is, is they will have a um, card, all right? So I have cards for all the different colors here, okay? And then um, they'll pick a color card. So let's just do, let's do orange, okay? And then what they will do is they will go through their colors here and they will find the one that is orange and place it right here. So we have an orange pumpkin, we have an orange tiger, and we have an orange fish. And then, since we're practicing the color word, we're going to build that color word with our magnetic letters. magnetic letters they should fit perfectly in these little boxes that I made on each card now if you do not 
have the magnetic letters or you don't want to go that route, you want to practice their handwriting. Let's say you're in kindergarten and you want them to write it or you want them to do both. They could build it and then they could write it with a dry erase marker in the spot. Okay, so you could use dry erase marker and have them write O-R-A-N-G-E. They're practicing and they're memorizing what the word orange looks like. Okay, so they can go on and they can do all these different colors. Now, speaking of colors, I have a handful of activities that I pulled out to practice on colors because I do have a two-year-old who loves doing activities with us. So I took a bunch of activities from my vocabulary for preschool and my hands-on to learn preschool curriculum. Um, both of them have activities working on colors. So I took some different ones out that I wanted to do with him um, because he just absolutely loves doing school with us. And so he wants to be included. Now he is a new two-year-old. In fact, he just turned two this month. We have a lot of birthdays in the month of August in our family, um, two of my children and then my husband and um, other extended family. So August is the birthday month around here um, for the most part. So uh, I pulled out a handful of activities to practice with him to work on his colors. I won't go through them like really in depth, but I'll kind of show you what I plan on doing with him. So these are vocabulary color um, matching puzzles and we're going to match them up and then I'm going to have him look through um, manipulatives I have, like maybe these, um, this is another set of bears that I have, and have him find the blue bear, okay? So once he matches it up, or you know, when he matches up the yellow banana, then we'll have him find yellow and so on, okay? So we're gonna do those. Um, here's some color clip cards as well that come in that vocabulary set. So we'll have him match, uh, obviously, when he matches it up, he can use a manipulative that's the same color. So he's matching up purple, he'll cover up the purple, okay? So we're gonna do those as well. And then there's a handful of really fun activities. This is from um, my vocabulary for preschool curriculum. I'll leave a link below to that as well. Okay, so for this activity, he can spin the spinner and then whatever it lands on, he's going to find that color on his mat. Okay, so it landed on the red crab. So he's going to look at his mat and find the red. Where's the red child? Where's the red? So looking here, I see red, and then he can use his pictures here to match up the red child on his mat. Or, instead of using the little cards it comes with, again, you could use your little manipulatives, and he could find the red one, place it on, and then spin again. So let's say this time he spun onto blue. So again, he would cover up blue and go on. And then you could say obviously the color name every time he's saying it. So he's trying to practice his speech as well and he's learning the different colors. So this activity is a lot of fun. Now you can play it with the spinner or you can play it with the cards. It comes with cards as well. And these cards are also great for just practicing your colors. So you can use them as flashcards or whatever. Or you can just hold one up and say purple, purple grapes. Can you find purple? And of course they would find it on their mat. So if you didn't want to do the whole spinning thing because sometimes that can get a little overwhelming for little kids because they all they want to do is just play with the spinner and they don't really understand it. The cards are another great way because it can be teacher directed. So the teacher just holds up a card and says, brown, this bear is brown. Can you find brown? All right, so much easier for say a two-year-old, a three-year-old might be a little bit more inclined to the spinner. Okay, not to go too much more into colors or this video is gonna be so long, but I did take out our color um, memory posters and I'm going to have him match them up. So as we introduce a color and as we talk about it, I'm going to have him match up blue to blue. So we have blue berries, a blue whale, and a blue sky, and we're going to find blue objects and we're just going to, you know, match them up. So I have posters here for each of the different colors. These ones come from my Hands On To Learn preschool curriculum. So these are for introducing the different colors. And then these are so fun. So there's one for each color. And what they do is they have to discriminate and they have to cover up just the blue pictures on the map, okay? So they're discriminating between all the different colors and they're finding just the blue color or the blue pictures. And then of course, I would have them cover them up with blue objects like I'm doing here. So this is just another fun one. And there's a map for each color. 
And these ones are from the Hands-On to Learn Preschool curriculum. Okay, so for this next activity, we are working on vowels. So with my kindergartner this first week of school, working on our vowels, A, E, I, O, and U, and we're practicing them. Now this activity actually comes from uh, week two of my Hands-On to Learn preschool curriculum. So even though it's for preschool, we are gonna use it for kindergarten, the first week of school, because we're practicing our vowels. And this activity in particular practices I, O, and U. And so what you do is you have these big mouth letters. This is big mouth I, this is big mouth O, and this is big mouth U. And we are gonna feed them the correct cards. So I have these cards here. Um, they have capitals and lowercase, I, O's, and U's, and then they have pictures that might begin with that letter. So this first one has an umbrella, a uh, uh, umbrella. We're gonna feed that to Big Mouth U because it starts with U. Then I have an octopus, a, uh, a, uh, octopus. He's gonna go to letter O, okay? So now I just attached these um, I, well, I laminated them and then I attached them to these baskets with just some tape. So I have them like taped on with some clear tape. You can also attach them to cups or um, whatever you want. I just think that these baskets work really well. And um, then they're just going to go through the card. So here is a lowercase u. So that's going to be fed to u. Let's see if I can find an i here. Here I have capital I. So capital I is going to go here. And they will just continue on feeding their I, O, and U, practicing those beginning sounds. This is A, A, ostrich. It's going to go to O. You get the idea. You can kind of see some of the um, pictures. This is under. The mouse is A, uh, A, uh, under. Okay. So another fun activity for us to do the first week of school. Okay, I know this video is getting long, so I'm going to try to wrap it up here. I just have a few more activities to show you. This one is super great for my two-year-old, so if you've got a little one, um, this one comes with the Hands-On to Learn Preschool curriculum, and this is fine motor racing. So I have every single letter of the alphabet, and they are all in these plastic sheets. And then what I did is I just um, connected them with, a book ring here so then we can just flip to the one we want but they are super cute um, so here is like the letter F and it has our road and then it has a lowercase letter just so that they can kind of see both of them and then up in the corner it has a picture that begins with that letter so there's a fish okay you, you need a, a little car some kind of little racing car and they are going to race and they are going to practice making the letter F with their car then we'll go down over over down, over, over, okay? So just a lot of fun. You use your cars to trace the letters, super cute. Down, back up to the top, big curve. So straight down, big curve. And they're gonna use their, their little cars, so fun one. Okay, we are almost done. This activity is alphabet dogs. Again, from a hands-on to learn preschool curriculum, we are just going to be practicing matching up those beginning sounds. So you have um, the little dogs here, and then um, you take a dog and you find the matching bone with the right letter. So obviously apple goes with this dog. And then our letter B dog is going to be banana. Okay, so you can match these up on a pocket chart or you could just match them up um, on the desk like this. And then our last step is I took out, you know, if you've seen any of my um, activity videos, you know I love um, having my kids use different manipulatives and different types of letters, magnetic letters, puzzle letters, and so on. These are puzzle letters and I, the reason I really like um, these is because there's a capital and a lowercase. They came with some um, Melissa and Doug set I have. I don't remember exactly, but what they would do then, it's got the capital and lowercase here on the dog so that they would find their capital and lowercase letter. And we would say capital A, lowercase A. A says ah, 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 as an apple. A says ah, ah, ah. And then they would find, of course, their capital and their lowercase B and match it up with their banana and their bee dog and so on. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, this tray here I have set up two different things. So let me take this one off and show you this one. This is a school ending sounds book, okay, that I made years ago. 
and um, you can print it out different ways. Uh, the way I printed it out here is I printed it on like a smaller scale and so I just made it into a book like this. You could also print it on a bigger scale and I have a video showing you how you can create um, this book differently. Uh, so if you're interested in knowing how to put together my books, uh, check out that video. It's a, re a recent one. But anyways, this is school words, so I thought it'd be great for the first week of school, obviously. And on this one, they're finding the missing letter. So you just need some manipulatives or you need a uh, dry erase marker for them to write the letter in. But if your children aren't writing yet, or you just don't want them to write, then they can put the answers with like magnetic letters or so on. So these are the puzzle pieces. So a pencil is missing the L. And then we have scissors here. So you're gonna add on an S. Globe, we're gonna add on a B. You get the idea. So they can use their um, letters or you can have them use a dry erase marker. Okay, for these, these are more practice with CVC words. This is from my phonics for reading curriculum that I told you that I just love using because I just, I get so much use out of it teaching kids to read. Anyways, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna practice putting the sounds in there and making the word. So this is bed. So we would practice the sounds for b, b, e, e, d, d. Where's b, b? And they would put the b in, then we would practice, I would say e, eh, e. Eh. And then I would say d, d, and they would practice um, finding the letters, finding what letter makes that sound. And then I'm going to say, this says bed, bed, b, e, d, bed. All right, and we go on and we can just do all sorts of different ones here. Some are upside down. <laughs> okay, I know I said that that was the last activity, but I found one more that I had taken out. So I want to show it to you really quick. So I promise this is the last one. But these are letter identification mats from my Hands On To Learn Preschool curriculum. And what we're gonna do is we are going to just do the letter identification. So they're practicing identifying capital and lowercase a on this mat. And you use any manipulative that you have free and they cover up the capital and the lowercase a's. Now obviously there's different fonts being used so it's a little bit trickier than you know normal. So that would be a, here's b, so we've got a capital B, capital B, capital B, and they're just going to practice. And I don't know how many different letters we're gonna do, but we'll do some and see how far it goes. I don't you know, force them to do all of them, obviously. They're not gonna do 26 pages um, in a day, but we practice different letters and I see how they do. And if they need more practice on this skill, then we'll come back and do it again another day. All right, so that's it. I promised you that that would be the last activity. This video is probably really, really long, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you stayed all the way to the end, uh, I really appreciate it, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.